Hello everyone and welcome to another very fun game you guys requested. It's a short one, uh, but it shows you what happens when you try something weird uh, against um, uh, the world champion. Uh, here in this game we'll have a completely new position already uh, as of move 4, uh, but you'll see uh, wh what I mean by this. So Magnus wins the first two games and now this is the third game. Again, Magnus with the white pieces like in game 1 and he opens with e4. We have c5 by Shakriar. Knight to f3, we have e6 going for the uh, for the e6 Sicilian, and now c4, Magnus goes for the Kramnik variation, he grabs the full center now, the d5 is under his control, uh, and here uh, you can continue this uh, many different ways, knight to c6 is the most standard idea, you could also play knight to f6, uh, you could play pawn to a6, you could play uh, queen to c7, so there are many moves you can try here, and many moves have been played here, but here uh, Mamidyarov plays pawn to g5, and it's a move that has only been once uh, been played once in 2007, seven in a game between a 1900 player and a 2000 player uh, where, where black just lost. Uh, and in that game, uh, d4 was played. But the d4 kind of uh, plays right into why black plays g5. If you play d4 here, you don't have the standard captures, captures, because uh, black will just kick away your knight. And once you move the knight, okay, see captures on d4. Queen captures, attacks the rook and queen f6. And already you are playing black's game. Uh, but in the game, after g5, Magnus just played pawn to h3, and he now asks, what is the pawn on g5 doing? I'm playing d5, uh, d4 next, and I'm going to attack it. And okay, bishop to g7, uh, we have d4, striking in the center, captures, captures, and now pawn to a6. Okay, now the knight is on d4, so you cannot capture on g5, but knight to c3 by Magnus, and now pawn to h6. We have bishop to e3. Uh, interestingly, Magnus is playing this, uh, every move is uh, the, the, the top engine recommendation. We have knight to e7, and now comes pawn to h4, just uh, threatening to win a pawn here. So g captures on h4, rook captures on h4, and now pawn to d6. And now Magnus goes queen to d he just adds a third attacker to the h6 pawn and it's a really really weird setup black has the usual uh pawn moves that you would see in a sicilian defense a6 d6 and e6 but there's no g pawn uh, uh which would kind of make sense maybe if you had a rook on the g file but you have a fianchetto bishop on the g file that's undefended not not as great so knight to g6 goes after the rook rook to h5 and now knight to d7 sort of inviting magnus to go after bishop captures on h6 but magnus just plays bishop to e2 he says i don't have to rush this there's no way for you to actually defend the h6 pawn knight to f6 attacks the rook and now rook to h3 and here shahir should just uh uh, sort of count his blessings and he should advance the pawn to h5, save the pawn and just continue the game somehow. Let's say castles, queen to c7 and the dream that he can maybe play bishop to d7, castles, king to b8 and sort of survive this position. But in the game he played queen to a5, uh, it's a defending the h6 pawn with a tactic because now if Magnus captures on h6 you can just go for, for all the traits here, captures, captures, captures and captures and then capture on e4 as the queen on a5 5 now uh, prevents the c3 knight from moving but magnus after queen a5 just plays queen side castles and now bishop to d7 mamidarov ready to, to jump to that uh, queen side with the king and now magnus throws a big slap in the face with knight to b3 uh, attacking mamidarov's queen and kind of asking him to move uh, back to queen to c7 or queen to d8 or maybe queen to b4 but shakriya played queen to e5 and now uh, uh, the position just falls apart so feel free to pause the video and figure out what Mamedyarov missed here while I give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the queen is in fact trapped. Uh, all of the squares available to the black queen are not available to the black queen as white um, uh, covers all of them. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to f4. Now, just in case uh, any of you consider the bishop to d3, this is the top engine move. 
uh, that defends the e4 pawn. Uh, so so it, it just prevents black from even capturing an e4, and f4 is still unstoppable. So if you play, if you even consider the bishop to d3, uh, there is a genius hidden inside you. But okay, uh, f4. If you're a human, f4 is perfectly fine. You you, you don't have to see something like this. Uh, as now the queen is uh, trapped. There's nothing to play. Even if you try to give up the knight here, captures captures the queen is still trapped. You you haven't really done anything with that knight capture. So Shakhriar tried knight captures on e4, but now Magnus just plays f captures on e5, knight captures on d2, and uh, as he captured the queen, Mamidarov also resigned the game. So it was in this position on move 18 that Shakhriar Mamidarov resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Once uh, knight captures on d5 and bishop captures on e5, if you count the pieces, uh, Ma Magnus is just up a full knight, so of course this is completely unplayable. Uh, so it was a uh, sort of a, a mix of maybe trying, uh, I doubt that uh, Mamedyarov had this prepared as a surprise for Magnus, I think it was uh, more of a, I'm already losing 2-0, to zero, so I have to try something radical, I'm not, I'm not really getting the positions I want, I have to try something radical to get back into the match, and uh, it didn't really work out, as unfortunately for Mamedyarov, Magnus played all the top engine moves in refuting this weird g5 idea but it's a nice line for like bullet or hyper bullet or maybe even three minute blitz uh, above that it would be it would be hard to pull it off because after g5 and h3 you have a sicilian setup with a weird pawn on g5 so maybe you could make something out of this but it's just it, it seems very hard uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely played by Magnus. For those of you who are interested, uh, I will show you the standings after the first three days of the Meltwater Champions Chester Finals. Uh, it is none other than Magnus Carlsen and Young Shishtov Duda uh, who are leading the event uh, with uh, perfect scores, 9 points each. Then with 4 points Anish uh, Prayag Nananda and Liam Le. And uh, with 3 points Shahir Mamedyarov and Wesley. So Arjun Ergeisi for the moment still with 0 points. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. The big clash uh, Magnus versus Duda is coming up. So we'll see what happens in that one. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, try weird ideas, but maybe maybe not against the world champion uh, and good things might happen. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to uh, Dean Bernal uh, G. And I would like to thank Ravishing Reptiles YouTube, Harry Barton, uh, Mariusz Klimek and Francis Air for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of this wonderful event uh, until it finishes. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.